Hello. Welcome to the session covering one of the newest features of Fiery Pro Server and Fiery XF 6.4, the Spot Color Variations feature. Now, fundamentally, Fiery Pro Servers and Fiery XF use definitions from the Spot Color Library creators, along with spectral measurements to calculate the most accurate reproduction of your spot colors. However, sometimes even a great delta E match does not yield an acceptable visual match. This could be due to issues such as spectrophotometer variations, viewing conditions, and even the non-uniformity of the LAB color space. Even if you create a spot color optimization file, the optimized spot color delta E values do not always result in desired spot color visual appearance when printed on your output device. Well, the new spot color variations feature is the only feature that allows you to modify a color subjectively by its appearance. You can modify the brightness, saturation, and color hue of a specific color, print 20 variations of it, and then select the one that you feel is the best visual match. You can repeat this procedure for any spot color that you wish to visually correct. Let's take a look at the color editor interface and see how to use the new spot color variations feature. Looking at the new 6.4 version of the color editor, the first thing I want you to notice is the lower right hand portion of the screen. This is the new spot color variations feature. Now to use this, I'm going to begin by selecting a color. I'll select Pantone Rhodamine Red from the list. And notice in the upper left hand corner of the spot color variations panel, the variations checkbox is grayed out. I cannot select it. That's because you're not allowed to edit or modify any of the internal colors that come with the Fiery Pro Server or Fiery XF system. So in order to make modifications, the first thing I need to do is duplicate the color by clicking on the third icon in on the bottom. And now I have a duplicate version of Pantone Rhodamine Red in my custom spot color list. Now the variations checkbox is available and I will select it. And the first thing that happens is a pop-up window appears asking me which printer and which media I'm going to use. The visual impact of printers and media on spot color uh, can vary greatly. So I'm going to print the sample colors first and then visually determine which one I like. So it's going to ask me now which printer and which media. I'll select my ViewTech printer. And under the print configuration set, I could select any presets that I maybe have already built on the media tab of the output device, or I could use the default preset, which means it will use whatever the default media currently is selected for that particular output device. So I'll leave it set at the default preset and click OK. And now you can see that the spot color variations area has become activated. I now have three, three sections, three sets of hexagons in this area. The center set of icons would be used to modify only the color balance, the hue of the spot color. The very, very center hexagon is the starting point. This is where our spot color currently is situated. If I were to click on the upper right hand hexagon, I would increase the yellow. If I selected the bottom left, I would increase the blue or decrease the yellow. Now the right and left sets of icons make modifications dependent upon whether you have the saturation or the brightness radio button selected. Right now the saturation radio button is selected, which means if I click on an icon on the right, I will increase the saturation and change the hue. If I select only the center icon, it would only increase the saturation. On the left hand side, if I selected the center icon, it would decrease the saturation. If I selected any of the other icons, it would decrease the saturation and change the hue. My other option is the brightness option, and it would do the same thing. I would increase or decrease the brightness and or change the hue, depending upon which icon I clicked on. On the bottom, I also have a coarse or a fine adjustment. So this will make modifications uh, more or less based on where you have that slider set. So if you only want just a slight change, you may move that down to the fine area. Or if you know you want to make a big change, you would move to the coarse area. The normal procedure for using this tool would be first to print samples of the colors. And if I click on the print icon, it will now have 
the display showing that I'm using the ViewTech printer and the default media. And on the pattern layout, I can select either the color search pattern or the color neighbor pattern. I'm going to talk about the color search pattern first. If I were to print that, I would print this set of samples. The samples have all of the uh, color modifications based on the hexagon kind of laid out in the same pattern. So what I would do is I would look at which of the printed samples I think best displays the color, or best shows the color reproduction, and then I would click on the corresponding icon. So let's say it is the less saturation and less cyan. Then I would click on this icon, and I want you to watch up on the CMYK section where it shows the current color recipe. And as I click on that, the color changed. Okay? I made the modification. Now I want you to be careful with those icons because you would normally think, well, if I click on less saturation and or less brightness in this case and less cyan, then if I click on the far right hand icon, which would be more red and more brightness, it would undo what I just did. And that's not the case because when you make a change, the center hexagon now becomes your new starting point. That is that current recipe. So it may calculate a change differently by clicking on different icons. If you need to undo what you did, click on the reset button up there. That will bring you back to your starting point. Okay? So it's very easy. You print out the samples, you point and click, and if you would like, you could print again and click again and continue until you're happy with the results. Now the second option under printing is the color neighbor pattern. The way the color neighbor pattern works, I'll just select that and click OK. The way that works is it prints kind of a more traditional look of what a Pantone library looks like. It prints each of the patches, but in addition to the patches, it has an indication of what the change was, uh, less yellow, more saturation, less brightness, and the recipe that it's going to use to reproduce that particular color. To use that, all you would need to do is come back in, pick the color patch you like, come up to the dependent color section, and simply key in the color change that you want. Okay, As simple as that. Now the beauty of that is you can come back anytime and make that change. You don't have to leave the interface open. If you're using the color search pattern, this version, you really need to keep the interface open. And the reason is, if you close the interface, when you come back in, the color variations checkbox is automatically turned off. Which means you'd need to select the spot color again. Now it would still be in the custom library, but if you turn on, if you check that checkbox, it's going to start over again. It's going to reset everything to the original uh, spot color specification because it recalculates based on the media you have selected. So you'd have to remember which boxes you pointed and clicked on, especially if you made multiple changes. It might be difficult to remember that. You might have to write all that down and again, uh, difficult. However, if you printed the color neighbor pattern, you could come back anytime later, simply select which color looks correct, enter that value, and you're good to go. Okay? Now, another benefit of the color neighbor pattern is as false. I'm going to select a second color. I'll duplicate it. Turn on color variations. Select my ViewTech printer with the default. Click OK. And select print the color neighbor pattern and click OK. Now I'll select this Pantone green, duplicate it, turn on variations, select my printer in the default, and once again, print the neighbor pattern. Now if you already had a custom color that you built, maybe something you measured from a sample from a customer or something that you keyed in, you could also just select that from the custom library and simply turn on variations. You wouldn't have to duplicate it. The only thing you have to duplicate is any of the colors that come with the system. So now I've printed several colors. I could now close color editor. And if I go to my fire interface, you'll see I've got the three separate panels that are waiting. On the system manager, I have deactivated the output side of my workflow. Because of that, these have basically come in and held. And now I could select them and right click and say nest 
and put them together and now you can see they're all laid up and I could print them all at once and save media. Okay? And I could print them whenever I'd want. I could come back anytime and simply look at the recipe for the color neighbor pattern for the, for the spot color uh, rendition that I think is the best or most accurate and key that into the interface. Now, something else that's very important. When you save your changes from the color editor, so I'm going to go back into the color editor. I'm going to say File, Save As, and I'll save it as Variations. And I'll say I want to set this for my G7 Grackle coded output or workflow, which is currently connected to my ViewTech output device. So now if I go to the System Manager, if I select that workflow, going to the color pane of the workflow and looking at the spot color pane, you'll notice Variations is the currently selected spot color library. So that's going to use any of the changes I've already made. But also important is that the CMYK is listed as the first item in the search priority. We're making changes to the CMYK recipes and we want to make sure that that's what's used. If internal is used first, well then, for example, my Rotomine Red, it would use the Rotomine Red LAB specification internal to that spot color that came from Pantone. The same would happen with any of the uh, DIC, HKS, or Toyo colors. So make sure you have the color selected first as the search priority uh, drop-down list and then print the samples, take a look at them, go back into the interface, make any changes you would like. And again, with the color neighbor pattern, once you make that change, if you want, you could continue on. Same thing with the point and click. Again, make sure you, you keep uh, in mind that if you close the interface and come back in, if you turn on the variations, it's going to reset. So the best is to use the color neighbor pattern. If you do come back into the color editor and select the spot color, turn on the variations, that's when you key in the change and then you could print a second sample with additional modifications, again, to either brightness and or saturation and or the hue. So give it a try. Uh, it's a, hopefully going to be a popular feature. It's something that a lot of people have been asking for for quite some time. And experiment with it, and we hope you will be very, very pleased with it. Thank you very much for your time, and go try out the Spot Color Variations feature.